All right, good morning. Hi, apparently we're just going to skip the intro, but eh, whatever it is, what it is. I am Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer coming at you at 6.15 a.m. on Thursday, the 2nd of March, 2023. I hope you got more than two and a half hours of sleep. I sure didn't, but Mama Nature's going to do what Mama Nature's going to do, and apparently Mama Nature's going to throw tantrums all night and into today. So let's just get into it. We do have a couple of stronger storms this morning. We've had some hailers overnight move across portions of South Central Texas, South Texas, and into the Victoria Crossroads. Uh, at the moment, we have no severe thunderstorm warnings, but some of those storms approaching Austin to Georgetown up to Cameron are capable of producing small hail and at times slightly larger than that. These storms may continue this morning, but we are not expecting a significant severe weather threat to materialize until closer to lunchtime. Speaking of which, let's just get into it. This is the latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center for today and this evening. Now we're going to see multiple instances of these outlooks issued today. The next one's actually gonna be out in about 45 minutes, and we're probably gonna see some changes to where the lines are drawn, etc. I know everyone likes to talk about, am I in the level three, the level four, etc. Don't focus on that. If you're in any risk level, you have a risk of severe storms today. The risk levels simply convey the likelihood of severe storms in your neck of the woods, meaning higher your risk level, higher the chance you have a storm impact in your immediate area today. Doesn't really have too much to do with storm intensity. So a storm in a level two risk could be as intense as a storm in a level four risk later today. And again, this also isn't a surefire bet. There are ways this could underperform today, while there are obviously ways we could be dealing with a significant severe weather event today. And I wanna emphasize that this is spring. We deal with these many times during the spring Today is going to be no different. We're going to get through it okay. I know many of you out there have anxiety, and I don't mean to add on to it. I'm just going to tell you what I know. I'm not going to tell you what I don't know. I'm going to try to explain things as easily and simply and quickly as I can so this doesn't end up being a 20-minute video. But again, the highest relative probability for numerous severe storms from about lunchtime onward into the evening today will be across North Texas central texas northeast texas into east texas and we're going to go through the timeline here in just a minute uh, in terms of the overall threats today we have an enhancement to the tornado threat which we'll look at specifically in a minute we have the potential for the strongest storms to produce hail up to and possibly larger than the size of baseballs this afternoon hail i think is going to be a big time issue and then we could also see some storms, especially up the line of storms tonight, or this evening and tonight, produce localized hurricane force wind gusts over 75 miles per hour. Now, in terms of the tornado potential, the highest relative tornado potential today will be across North Texas, Northeast Texas, and parts of East Texas. This includes Sherman, the DFW Metroplex, Waco, Tyler, Longview, Marshall, Lufkin, Texarkana, everyone in between. It's a big happy circle that isn't really so happy. And then the tornado threat is low to very low outside that. So again, not all storms today are going to be severe. Not all storms today are going to produce tornadoes. Not all storms are going to produce baseball size hail. And not all storms are going to be producing hurricane force winds. And not all storms are even going to be all that intense. So let's take a look at the overview, the animation of the high resolution rapid refresh model. Now where I'm gonna go, and we're gonna look at this frame by frame here in a minute, but I just wanna look at an overview, let this play for a few cycles, just to show you what we're expecting in terms of a timeline. Uh, we're gonna start seeing isolated storm development probably by 11 a.m. to noon in western portions of North Texas, the big country. And then we're going to see an expansion east towards the DFW Metroplex. Individual thunderstorms are going to likely be moving east-northeast. We may see some storms turn a little right, and that would make them move more easterly than northeast. And those would have the highest threat for uh, tornadoes, very large hail. And we may also see some storms take a more deviant left motion, more north-northeast. Those would be the big, big hailer threads. But I don't... Let's not get all 
worked up on that mean storm motion today northeast about 40 to 45 miles an hour late this afternoon after we're dealing with several hours of potential supercell thunderstorms in the big country north texas texoma northeast texas we're going to see a line of storms fire up along a eastward moving dry line cool front in western north texas extending down into parts of central texas that line of storms is going to quickly move east this afternoon, this evening, into East Texas, parts of the Brazos Valley, Northeast Texas, the Arklatex. Strongest storms in that line could be producing hurricane force winds over 75 miles an hour, embedded tornadoes, and pocket change size hail. And again, not all the storms are going to be severe. Let's be clear on that. Now, in terms of the individual timeline, again, here's noon with the latest high-res rapid refresh model. Now, this model is not doing well with what is going on now around Austin. It doesn't show that. So let's be perfectly clear. It is entirely plausible. This model is off its rocker, and we're going to have to adjust the forecast here this afternoon. But for now, this seems like a pretty good scenario to share with y'all. This is noon today. Notice we already have a couple of severe storms underway in the eastern big country, western north Texas. Those are moving northeast, the strongest of which are probably producing golf ball to baseball size hail by this point. Here is 2 p.m. You can see we have an abundance of strong to severe storms now moving into north Texas, the eastern big country portions of north Texas. You'll note some of these storms are out by themselves. And without going into the weather nerdy-isms, we're going to have a warm front around Interstate 30. Depend, we're going to have to see where this warm front ends up because it's going to be a focal point for an enhanced tornado threat later today because it's going to have extra wind shear thunderstorms can tap into. And those thunderstorms, if they interact with that warm front or south of that warm front, will have a higher threat of producing tornadoes. If they're north of the warm front, where temperatures north of the warm front are going to be in the 50s, 60s, compared to south of the warm front, where temperatures are in the 70s and 80s, storms north of the front, still definitely capable of producing hail, but a much lower tornado wind threat. Meanwhile, along, near, and south of the warm front, all modes of severe weather possible. So again, this is 2 p.m. Uh, if this is correct, we're going to have problems in the DFW Metroplex by 2 p.m. And... By problems, I mean we could have some of these storms producing baseball size hail or larger and can't rule out a tornado threat. Here is 4 o'clock. You can see we've just got problems. Uh, we've got severe thunderstorms underway across Texoma, southeast Oklahoma, north Texas, and then we're already seeing additional development back in western north Texas. These All these storms moving northeast at about 40 to 50 miles an hour, and uh, we, we would be busy. If this is right, we're going to be very busy by early afternoon. Here's 6 o'clock. You can see we now have our line of severe storms extending from Gainesville to Fort Worth all the way west towards uh, Gatesville down to Kerrville. Uh, less intense the farther south you go. But at this point, this line would likely be producing big-time wind, hail, and the possibility of tornadoes as it moves quickly east through the DFW Metroplex. So we are likely going to see multiple rounds of severe storms today around the metroplex and again exactly where that corridor sets up is probably going to shift some but that's what it looks like right now here's eight o'clock we've zoomed out a bit line of storms from paris to terrell down to waco down i-35 to near austin san antonio notice that they're the most intense from about waco north and weaker to the south We'll see how that plays out, but that's not an unreasonable assumption. And then here is 10 o'clock. Notice the line of storms much weaker in the Brazos Valley, the coastal plains, really just a line of showers with some uh, storms, and then the highest severe weather threat in northeast Texas. So that is what that is looking like in terms of today and this evening. And again, we really want folks to pay attention to the uh, weather today, and we want folks to know where you're going to go if dangerous weather approaches. Uh, if you're in a site-built structure, apartment, office building, etc., get as low as you can, lowest floor possible, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We want you to not be obviously near any windows. We don't want you to try to go look outside at the thing. Uh, this is going to apply for tornado warnings and for storms that are producing giant hail or hurricane force winds. Obviously... Get as low as you can, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. 
uh, have hard sole shoes on, and this would be a good time to put uh, helmets in your safe place, you know, bicycle helmets, sporting helmets, uh, motorcycle helmets. And that would be for everyone, your grandma, your grandpa, you, yourself, your family, your children, just in case we do end up having problems in your neck of the woods. That way, if there's flying debris, you have a much higher chance of being protected compared to not. Uh, studies from previous tornado events in the southeastern United States last decade showed a abnormally high fatality rate with folks who had head injuries. And the scientific research showed that helmets, believe it or not, even, even bicycle helmets, helped to greatly reduce the chance of fatal head injuries in a tornado. And in terms of manufactured housing, mobile home safety, uh, you cannot be in one. If we have tornadoes, hurricane force winds, both of them, that you can't be in a manufactured or mobile home with that going on today. Uh, they are beautiful. They are great affordable housing. My parents are looking to get in one this, living in one this summer, but you cannot be in one during significant severe weather. So know where your community shelter is, know where you can go take shelter, you know, a friend's house, a uh, hotel, a restaurant, a gas station, and you need to be on guard today. You need to be paying attention. You need to be at that safe place before you're under a tornado warning. So keep an eye on the radar today. Uh, depending on exactly what plays out later, I'd say just go if go go to your uh, shelter location once we have a tornado watch issued, probably by uh, lunchtime, early afternoon. So that is what we are expecting in terms of the severe weather, the timing aspects, the potential threats, and the overall scope of how today may play out. And of course, there's going to be surprises, and we're going to be looking for the smaller scale features now as we get closer into the late morning, early afternoon, where the warm front sets up in north, northeast Texas, how far that gets. We're going to be watching for any sort of boundaries called outflow boundaries left over from the thunderstorms this morning in central Texas. Uh, all those can locally enhance low-level wind shear and provide a more favorable environment for severe storms, an environment already supportive of severe storms. So that's what we're going to be watching for. Uh, we're going to have pretty much the entire team out chasing today, it looks like. So we're going to have multiple live streams on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be live doing severe weather coverage once significant severe weather gets underway, probably around or just after noon, and going probably through at least eight to nine o'clock if not longer and we really encourage folks to hit that subscribe button on the texas storm chasers youtube channel if you're watching us on facebook facebook has been greatly throttling our video reach for the last month or two so most folks are not seeing our posts most folks on facebook do not see our videos our live coverage notifications etc so we really don't want folks relying on our facebook page for weather information during this event. You need to be following us on YouTube or you need to be following us on the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app and website. That's that's how you're gonna get notifications that we're live, that you can watch our videos, etc. So with all that being said, we will have an updated outlook out from the Storm Prediction Center here in about 30 minutes. We'll share that graphic. I don't think we're gonna see too many changes. And again, don't we're not gonna fixate on where the lines are drawn and any of that nonsense. But we will be watching for the morning weather model data, the weather balloon data over the next two to three to four hours. We'll see how things are trending, shaping up, and where if and where we may have a slightly higher threat corridor develop hopefully we'll be able to start pinning that down on a map so with all that being said thank you for joining us this morning we're going to be here for y'all as we always are have a good morning god bless we'll have multiple video updates throughout the day and then live severe weather coverage this afternoon and this evening